have John Schneier for the speech titled Quiet Heroes. In the speech titled Quiet Heroes, John Schneier. My father is in a box. I am standing above him in a church filled with friends and family who've come to pay their respects. I'm giving his eulogy at his funeral. I don't know if I have the strength to get through it. Fortunately, I woke up and realized I had been dreaming. My father is not Master, dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. I woke up shaken, but relieved. I began to reflect on my own life and my relationship with my father. I started thinking about my heroes when I was growing up. But what is a hero? I grew up in the shadows of the man-made mountains of Manhattan. On the evening news, I would see a story of a fire raging in a high-rise building. A fireman coming down from a tall ladder with a baby tucked under one arm and a puppy cradled in the other. He saved them both. What do we call such a person? A hero, of course. He'll be all over the news. He'll get the key to the city. I even show up on The Tonight Show. But what about those quiet heroes behind the scenes? What about the fire inspectors who work with architects and builders designing safer buildings? They write codes. They do inspections in the heat of summer and in the cold of winter. Aren't they heroes, too? As a kid, I played Little League Baseball. I'm a big Yankee fan. And like most of my friends, my hero was Mickey Mantle. Mickey was big. He was strong. Faster than a deer. He hit towering home runs. I discovered Mickey was also human. He had many failings. He died as a result of his alcoholism. I moved to New Jersey and joined the high school cross country team where I ran every day. My hero then was Steve Prefontaine, holder of every American record from two miles to 10,000 meters and fourth place finisher in the 1972 Olympic Games. I discovered he was human too. He ran hard and he lived life hard. He died behind the wheel in a single car accident in his prime. No one knows for sure, but alcohol strongly suspected. My dad, he's just an ordinary guy. No headlines for him. Married for 56 years five kids, and a long career. He rode the Long Island Railroad into Manhattan every day. I have never seen a day in his life where my father didn't limp because of his very bad back. He used to wear a big belt under his clothing. It looked like an old-fashioned girdle. Had metal bands down the back to support him. The constant jostling on the train sent pain up his spine. And yet, this ordinary guy would take me out to practice baseball every night after dinner. He would pitch to me, he would hit to me, and most valuable to me, but painful to him, he would catch so I could pitch. He had to crouch down to give me the target, putting pressure on his back. Sometimes he had a little stool, he'd sit on the edge of it, 
just to give him some support. Come on, John, give me a hard one. I wound up and threw a flaming fastball at him. I knocked him off his stool. Instead of getting angry, my father came up with a big smile and said, that's what I wanted, that's the way to go. He was always encouraging. I always took him for granted. Isn't that what dads are for? I played Little League for three years. My third year, I finally got the pitch. I went undefeated and led my team to win the championship. My father came up to me and said, see, all your hard work paid off. I didn't realize it then, but it was really dad's hard work that had paid off. Sometimes our heroes are right in front of us, and we fail to see them. I realize now my father is my hero. I encourage everyone. Find your heroes, whether they be teachers, family, or coaches. Let them know the difference they've made in your life while they're still around to appreciate it. I shared this with my father. He didn't remember everything he's taught me, but he was happy that I learned from him. Let everyone know that they've made a difference in your life, even if you have to throw a fastball and knock them off the stool. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>